If you ever seen geometry in art, uh, sorry about this, the telephone is ringing. Have you ever seen geometry in art? I am sure I have seen such a thing. And I'm sure you have too. Geometry deals with the measurements, as we know, properties and relationships of points, lines, angles, surfaces, and solids. To this, add pigments, and each element remains invariant under specified transformation. Hello, I am Valentina Girasola, designer, author, and lover of colors. The title of today's show is Pigment in Motions, and my guest is a renowned artist, Seidel Lewis, who will tell you all about her geometry in art using movements of pigment. Hello, Seidel. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you, Valentina? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. Nice to have you here today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. My pleasure. So tell me a little bit about uh, you. In your working career, you went from being a, uh, I would say, science technical work to art. Tell us a little bit about that, how, how it happened. How did it happen? Okay. <laughs> well, as um, a, a youngster, um, I was exposed to... Uh, science because my family valued science being immigrants at least my first generation and um, one of my uncles was the first one who went to college and he was a biochemist so I science was always on my agenda however I always loved to paint and I was encouraged to paint very early on uh, and so I had that in, in my life. When it came to going to college, I decided to study chemistry um, because I realized that I needed to earn a living. I was told that from early on and I knew chemistry would at least give me an interesting way to earn a living. I did not want to teach and I did not want to be a commercial artist. I just wanted to be an artist. So that's the path. Uh, art, art was value as uh, losing time at one point. It wasn't really worth it. I mean, uh, regarded as a career that a young. That's, that's true. That is true. That is true. But I, I had I had valued art because in grade school I had a teacher who used to present us with. Um, it was called Picture of the Week, and she'd present uh, a reproduction of a piece of art and we would write about it. And so I value, that taught me that art had value. And then I guess I learned that I had some ability. Um, so I always treasured that. But, um, so I went to work and, but I always continued my art career at, at night. And then I left, I was able to uh, leave uh, chemistry in, in 1992, which is quite a long time ago. I became a full-time practicing and, and exhibiting artist at that time. So that's nice. It's uh, you had a great balance. You did make a a career that was you know that paid you your living, and then you know, you did art, and then 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 you continue to today. I continue to do art. I always did, yeah. as, as yeah. you'll see it probably later on. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you define your particular style? Because your style is very particular. And how did you develop that particular skill? Well, um, it's interesting that you say it's particular because my style does change. But there are some basic elements that are always in, in what I do. <coughs> and, uh, mostly, um, I think of my work as, as visual collages um, and it, they're very, I feel like I'm synthesizing, which comes from my science. I'm synthesizing, I take elements that fascinate me 
includes geometry, includes abstract shapes, and, um, and also uh, recognizable objects. And because we live in, in this century and we have a history, I can now combine them all, which I like to do, and create new scenarios, which interest me and hopefully interest other people. Um, so, and of course, I'm, I am a colorist. I'm totally in love with color. Excuse me. And um, I, um, I like to, um, I, I'm interested in color and, and texture uh, and uh, of course design. So that's how I, I think that explains my work, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now I would. Yeah, I guess one more thing, which I guess I should say, my work is influenced by three different movements in art history, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, cubism is basic. It gives me permission to actually synthesize all of these things from different time frames, right. and then abstract expressionism, of course, gives me the, in a way, the permission or the idea of the way I use paint, which is not in a painterly, standard painterly way, which is using a lot of brush strokes that are obvious, but I create textures with the paint. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the op art movement has influenced my work. And I think the rotating paintings, which I think we'll talk about later, mm -hmm. was really influenced by op art in, in a way. So. So those are the influences too. And I can see at least the first two in it. Yeah. So now I will show the video that I made, a short video that I made with your art. Let's see. Okay. Um, video file. Okay. It's going to come in in a moment. Here we go. Now I wonder how you did that. <laughs> it's called technology. <laughs> I know, but you have to know it. <laughs> so I'm glad that I was able to put a, a little bit of your paintings together. They, uh, they kind you. of tell the story of what you do. So a few years ago, you and a sculptor came up with this fun idea of rotating paintings. Um, so that was, to me, when I saw it, was a really fantastic idea, uh, which you can see, especially, it works especially with um, abstract, I would say, paintings that you can see it from one way or another, and it's never the wrong way. And that caught my eyes because when we have paintings on the walls for a long time, it's always the same view, right? It's always the same thing, no matter what you do, even if it's beautiful or if it's um, an, um, a known artist, it's always the same view. So as, um, you know, at least for me, I get tired of the same view. So I rotate my paintings. I go to the garage and pick up more and put them on and take those that have been on for a while. I take them off. I take them down and put some new ones on. And it's always rotating season by season or mood by mood. 
But this rotating um, device that you invented, it's quite fabulous. So tell me about that, and I will show the um, and I will show uh, this device in a minute. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, the history of that is, um, as I said, op art had certain influence on me. I visited uh, the Vassalari Museum in Aix-en-Provence a number of years ago, probably 19, oh, in the early 20s. Um, and I, for some reason, when I came home, uh, I, start, I was doing these striped paintings, which were very agitated. And my habit of turning my paintings around comp to see composition, it purely was technical kept turning them around because it's difficult if you're just doing striped paintings to get things that are exciting and, and balanced. And that gave me the idea, I started to realize, oh, these are landscapes if they're on their side or they're, they look interesting upside down. So I had a contractor make a hand turned rotator, which I had a show in. And I, I asked people to physically turn the paintings and you can't do that for very long in a gallery. And so I came across uh, this a sculptor and engineer, Mark Galt, and we had a talk and he said, I'll work with you. He, he was kind of interested in this. And it took about a year and he developed this very lovely mechanism that you attach to the back of the canvas. And it rotates, he set it up so that it, you could rotate it at one minute turn, five minutes, 15 minutes, depends on what you need. You could override it and, and it's, it's just a really fine mechanism. And we did that, I did that for a number of years. Um, and I still have the rotators and I've actually recently shown one at Gallery House a couple of months ago, which, um, so occasionally I do show them, uh, they take, you have to look after them, change the batteries, so it has some maintenance to it. Can it can the painting be continuously rotating instead of just a few minutes? No, no, it is okay. because that's not what we're doing. That's right. a different kind of concept. Okay. Uh, because, as you say, the painting, um, you know, you get tired of it. In fact, I recently had some friends who were all excited because they had had a painting and they were accidentally hung it upside down and they liked it. And this wasn't my painting, it was somebody else's, but it was just, they knew my work. And so they were so excited to tell me about that. Yeah. And, and you know, that was really very nice that, um, and, and a lot of my artists' friends, when we meet together and sometimes we have critiques. So sometimes we, they turn their paintings upside down. It's it's a very helpful. Yeah, you know, as I said, yeah. change perspective. Yeah, it does. And it changes yeah. your life. You know, yeah. not yeah. only a point of view, but it really whatever you do in life, yeah. you change yeah. your perspective, and yeah. that will change your outcome. Yeah. No, yeah. not not every painting is no, not every painting is susceptible, but but there are paintings that are you know well, you'll see this one that you know it lends itself. To, to that exactly, thing. especially of uh, abstract, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now let me show this rotating, um, uh, uh, rotating device that you have. There we go. There is no volume here, but it shows what you did. Yeah, and then you know you have the diagonals uh, position as well. Right, exactly. Later. Yeah, I think this is exceptional. I think it's an exceptional idea. So once you decide the um, position that you might want to look at it in a new light, you can leave it there like this. Yeah, you turn it off. off. There's yeah. a little, a little, a little back that you turn. Okay. It's see. very easy. Yeah, it's very easy. So you can leave it the way you see it. And it just, uh, it just uh, improves, not improves, but it just gives you imagination of other things. It's very nice.
Oh, I think you. it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's come back to us. In your latest work, I see a lot of light. Um, compared to the, the previous work, the earlier work, so have your life experience influenced your aesthetic beauty, your style, uh, the way you perceive light? I think maybe um, the fact that um, I'm also a printmaker besides a painter. Mm -hmm. And my latest interest in printmaking is digital printmaking, uh, where, where I often use a camera um, to, to get some of my images. Um, and then I manipulate them because I'm not a photographer. It's just a tool for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's possible that, I mean, I, I am probably more interested in light now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, it's interesting that you picked that up because I, you know, I just kind of do it and don't, don't think much about that. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what's motivating me these days. So yes, I think a lot of my work has a lot of light and I think it has to do with a slight change in attitude based on when I'm, I'm doing something new and mm -hmm. different. And Shapes are also very different than your early work. Are you using a different media? Are you incorporating real pigments or, because I know your paintings is mostly digital, right? Am I correct? No, no, no. My paintings are with acrylic paint. Oh, they are? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, all my paintings on canvas are acrylic paint. Now, digital work is different. That's created with a printer. Mm -hmm. And I have a big 44-inch printer, so I can print large works. And, um, and I can print on canvas. Mm -hmm. And I just recently sent a 36 by 36 inch uh, piece to Portugal, which will be in a print show uh, next year. Right. So um, that's, it's a whole different thing. It gets confusing to the public mm -hmm. sometimes because right. pig, uh, uh, using pigment print, pigment paints mm -hmm. are, they are very stable. Uh, all the materials I use for printing, again, the paper, it's very stable, it's archival, and it's the cutting edge of what we're doing now in printmaking. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, there are two things I do. I, and I've done tra uh, traditional printmaking also all my life, but, but in the last, I'd say 12 years, I've been doing all digital uh, work. Yeah. And I find it very exciting because I can, I can use my camera, I use my iPhone, and I can just put all of these things together and then do the, I do painting on the computer as well with some of the tools. Mm -hmm. So with some of my work I call digital painting because I'm painting most. And some of them I call just digital prints when I use some photography. So I tried to. Clarify. So I was asking about the shapes other than the light. I've noticed your shapes are different. Um, that's. I, I don't know, um, I guess my shapes are more organic now, maybe, mm -hmm. is that what you're saying? I've gotten away from, um, well, I don't know if I've totally gotten away from, uh, I, I don't do just geometric stripe paintings anymore. Yeah, I, I don't. Okay. I'm doing more organic things, and I have been doing that for a long time now, more organic work. I, I just... I, I don't know, just change. I do, I find if, I, if I'm doing one thing, I reach a certain point where I've done it. I've explored it as much as I, I can. Yeah, and you do something else, yeah, and yeah. I find it, it's but just- That's the way fun. it's supposed to be in art and anything else. You know, yeah. once you've done something and you satisfy your curiosity yeah. and your- and, um, and you're different too. I mean, you change, you know, you're, Oh, yeah. you're, you're changing ever you know you're certainly not the same as I was 20 years ago absolutely and your interests change and you I think you respond to that yes yes absolutely to the evolution of life yes. <laughs> of life <laughs> yes so how do you um 
conceive the movement of your pigments. Because we've called the show <laughs> Pigment in Motion. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wonder myself. <laughs> You know, it's it's so intuitive. Uh, it's so intuitive. People keep asking me, "How do you know your painting is finished?" <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. That's so. A, you know, and it, yeah. it's involved with the movement of pigments. You yes. know, I look at my work. Mm -hmm. You know, every day I look at the piece of work, and I say, "Okay, I have this. Let's say movement of red somewhere," and I think, mm -hmm. "Oh, it's not balanced. It doesn't feel right." put another red. Mm. So intuitive. I I don't even I I you know I make choices when I start of you know what what palette am I going to use. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes these paintings just evolve. You just sometimes you don't even have an idea. Sometimes when I'm I'm not working for a while and I have to get started again, I right. tell myself make the first stroke and then you get started. That's the only way you can. Yeah. And so uh, again, it's it's very intuitive. Um, I'm looking for balance. I'm looking for uh, dark and light. I'm looking for moving your eye, not getting stuck. Things like that. All artists do that. So, yes, is that helpful? I don't know. Yes, yes. I was looking at the Facebook page. I cannot get it at the moment. I'm not so sure why. So I don't know if there are any comments, but I will check in a bit later. Let's see what happens. If there are any comments, we will um, answer them. So, but in the meantime, while I'm searching to see what's on uh, coming on Facebook, <laughs> Tell me, um, describe your art. Is it important to society? Does an artist have a role in society? Uh, yes, <laughs> because without art, life is really pretty grim. Could be pretty it's grim. Dull, <laughs> ugly. Uh, I, think, I think art, I mean, in so many different ways, you know, even just the your furniture, you know, just mm -hmm. everything we live with that gives us comfort and pleasure is somehow related to art. So yeah, I think exactly. it's really important. I know. It's uh I mean, what would we do without art, right? Uh, yeah, I I don't I don't know what I would do without art. I, I don't think we could do without art. No, I think it really contributes to everybody's life. Life I mean, itself is. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, of, of primitive, even primitive people, they oh. had nature around them, but they oh, everybody makes art. Everybody has made art. Yeah. Yeah. It's an expression of our sentiments and our, you know, yeah. what's inside of us. Absolutely. And, um, so basically, let's say that um, art helps you in other parts of life, in other areas of life, of your life. Well, I it well, it's the most important thing in my life. Um, I yeah, I think so. I think it's the way you think about things. I think it helps me in my cooking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because <laughs> in seasoning things, <laughs> I, I yes. have a feeling. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now, that's um, not what I want to show. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Something else came okay. out. <laughs> okay, I that. Oh, boy, these, all these buttons. <laughs> okay. So, you say, you were saying in cooking, art helps you as well yeah and i i think uh you know being involved in the creative process um when you uh come across difficult situations mm -hmm. and you i think it helps because then you because in art you're looking for different solutions all the time mm -hmm. you're not you know you you it gives you i think it gives your mind a little flexibility so if you're stuck at something it's a creative process to think of other possibilities. Right. I don't 
I, I'm guessing that that's, that's part of the whole thing. Problem solving. You know, I didn't know you cooked. I somehow. Oh, I don't, I don't cook. I, I mean, I cook when I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not. Somehow you came, you came to me like, um, I, I don't know. I had this idea of you that you were not into cooking. You are just an artist who paints and that's all you do. Well, but I like to eat, so and so does my husband. <laughs> I don't do elaborate cooking, but what I'm saying is I do fairly simple cooking, but I find that like I'm not afraid to use spices and mix them up. And I think that comes from my art. You know, it's pretty basic cooking, mm -hmm. but in order to make the food taste good, you need spices. Interesting. You, you, yeah. yeah, and so I'm willing to experiment and this and that. And sometimes I'm surprised. So yeah, you even surprise yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to cook. I cook every day, and I'm just like a painter in a kitchen. I am. I just use spices, just like you do colors. Yeah. And shapes everything has to be cut the same shape oh <laughs> oh yeah you know it's otherwise it's just not appealing to my eyes yeah because you know making life beautiful it's also part of these details every detail is supposed to make the beauty of what you're creating yeah. in your own life so so tell me um uh, Two of your painting, and they're called, I think, let me check my note, Inside Out and uh, Salon, no, at the um, Silk Dreams. They're being accepted at the Salon at the Tri Triton in yeah. August 2022, right? Uh, no, actually, the Silk Dreams was last year. Was it last year? Oh. Yeah, and this year, um, Inside Out. Outside, outside In is, yeah. Okay, they have been, been accepted. accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on that. It's a good achievement. Thank you. Thank you. So I will show it. The last in my show, the, the show that I had just, uh, the video that I had on, the last two paintings are these ones that have, we are talking about that have been accepted at the Triton. So if people would like to go see it, they, they can. And I'm going to put the uh, video out again. Yeah, it's the next to the last one right. is uh, Outside In that will be shown. Right. Uh, I think the show go starts uh, August uh, 13th yeah. uh, and it goes through uh, the end of August, I think maybe into September, I forget exactly. Nice. There will be a reception um, on August 14th August from 2 to 4 at the Triton. The Triton is in Santa Clara Museum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I hope you have a good turnout. That's uh, always um, hoped that we have a lot of uh, guests and a lot of people interested in art. And um, do you have a, a website where people can see uh, your work? Yes, I do. Yes. Um, what is it? Yeah, it's uh, it's Sidel Lewis with three L's. <laughs> three L's. <laughs> three L's. SidelLewis.com. Okay. Pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So now this show is about to end and it's about creating beauty every day. That's the way I've called the show, Create Beauty Every Day. As an artist, that the artist that you are, 
How do you create beauty in your daily life? Oh. <laughs> well, I assume by painting I create some beauty, yeah. And, um, you know, my house, I keep my house in a certain way. My house is like an art gallery. I not only have my work, I have other artists' work. So I try to have beauty around me and my garden and um, I just, and when I've I seen your there, home, you remember when I brought the Italian producer to I film your home? I only do. That was a highlight of my life. Whenever. <laughs> that was beautiful. And I've never been in your house before that. I was really surprised. Yeah, it's really was beautiful. Really you did a very nice, very personal style because it's not mm, too modern it's not antique it's not it's a very particular style and i don't like the colors everything is soothing in your home but not soothing dead not beige <laughs> no beige <laughs> you <have> colors <laughs> you, of course you have colors you're an artist you have a yellow cap <laughs> yeah <laughs> And you live in an Eichler, you know, yes. typical Eichler, which in itself is a beautiful architecture yeah. uh, a home that is no longer built, but it's beautiful. So I can vouch for that. Thank you. And uh, so your beauty, my hair today are going everywhere in my face. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway. I think we need to end the show because we are past the time. I'm not sure, but um, we have said just about everything. Do you want to add anything else that I have not um, uh, said or asked you? Well, um, I could just say that um, if people who live in the Bay Area would like to see my work, uh, you can see the Gallery House in Palo Alto. Uh, if you're in Sausalito, you can see it at Robert Allen Fine Arts. Um, or you can come to my studio. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Okay, so I will see you at the Triton when you, what is it, 14th of August? 14th of August, yeah. Okay, very nice. Okay, my dear, I will let you go. It was a pleasure to have you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here, yeah. Thank you. And it's uh, always a good thing to talk about art. Uh, art and beauty will save the world, as I'm very convinced of that. Beauty will save the world. So let's make everything beautiful in our lives and whatever we do, let's just think of that little nuances that we can add to our lives, our dressing, our house and everything that surrounds us, even relationships can be made into a very beautiful entity. And with this, I just um, will say uh, goodbye to everyone until the next Tuesday, the next episode of Create Beauty Every Day with a new guest. I'll say just as usual, a big kiss and peace, love. Always. Thank you for being here, Saido. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>